Thank you for joining me today on Paint a Beautiful Picture. All this week we've been talking about question, questions and answers and giving them honestly those answers to your children. Today we're going to talk about teaching the value of curiosity. A couple days ago we talked what it was like squelching your child's curiosity. And we talked about things you could do to nurture your child's curiosity. Today we're going to talk about teaching them the value of curiosity. When my boys were little, we had these series of books and I've looked for them used. I've never found them again, so I'm so glad that I kept them. And it was teaching the value of. And there were tons of books in that series. So they talked about teaching the value of perseverance. They used Thomas Edison because he attempted to create the light bulb well over 900 times without getting it to work. And he understood electricity very well and he knew where he was going. He really had a firm idea of what it was going to take, but he couldn't keep that wire from burning up. And actually it was one of his assistants that suggested to him that there needed to be an airtight vacuum inside of the glass globe so that that could continue to burn con continuously without dissipating, without burning up, and they would have light. And sure enough, it worked. Thomas Edison was a man of incredible perseverance. So we're going to talk about teaching your child the value of curiosity. Some people aren't that curious. That's a little perplexing to me because it's very out of my norm about who I am. You know, I'm always curious about everything, so I'm kind of surprised when someone's like, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't really care about that. I, I don't need to know about that. Okay, today I can respect that there are people who are far less curious. As we talked about, though, children are endlessly curious. Oh, yes, they are. You want to teach them the value of that. There were people in the world who were curious about the human body four or 500 years ago. It was against the law to desecrate a human body. They didn't know anything about how things functioned inside someone anatomically. They had no idea where things really were located. And so they, they became grave robbers. They dug up bodies and people that were interested in medicine started cutting people apart, dead bodies, even rotting ones. Can't even imagine how unpleasant all of that had to have been. They were so committed. They had such curiosity about what things look like and how they functioned and could they do anything. They would look over and over again at people who had died of particular kinds of diseases. They started to discover things about the disease, disease process. They knew how things would affect certain parts of the human body. That was pure curiosity. I don't know too many people who would go around and say, yeah, that's a great idea. You should start digging up graves so you can find out what, you know, dead people look like on the inside. Okay. Just, yeah, sometimes curiosity is a little out of the norm and uncomfortable for some people. I, I just want you to know that. But to teach your child the value of curiosity, you can look at some of those things historically and say, people had to do some desperate things to find out how disease worked. Another way I'm going to tell you, Indians, American Indians, and very truthfully, people in other cultures with what was available to them, they would find roots and herbs, barks off of trees, berries. They would experiment. That's how they found out that the bark of a certain tree boiled in water would heal a headache and aches. What do you know? We still use that today. Acetosalic acid. This would be aspirin. A-S-A. -A. Yeah, the American Indians were the ones who knew about that and found it. I have to tell you, in that curious part of things, people died. <laughs> Surprise because not everything they did worked. Well, they found out, yeah, don't use that again. You have to understand the value of curiosity and you have to understand that for your children, it's very fascinating to know that there were other curious people in the world who did great things. Literally, help your child find out things about Galileo. I'm not gonna tell you everything. I mean it. I want you to go look. I want you to go look with your child and discover some of the things that some of these people did that were just amazing. Christopher Columbus's curiosity to me not only was amazing, his courage was out of this world. He was so convinced 
that there was a way that he was going to reach the Indies by sailing toward the west. You know, people in those days, they thought the earth was flat. They thought you got to a certain place, like here on the edge of a table, and you just went right off the edge. They really believed it. Every map you look at, it was drawn that way. This was a gutsy guy. He said, look, give me some ships. Let me go that direction. I mean, yeah, granted, I might die. The guys with me might, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. I actually think I'm going to reach land and I'll bring you back wealth untold. He did actually reach land. What do you know? He was right. And it was his curiosity about how to do something and how to get somewhere that compelled him. Now, granted, he found a whole entire another new world. <laughs> Not the old one he thought he was going to get to. It was a lot farther than he knew around this planet. But it was his curiosity that drove him to go there. Lewis and Clark. Oh my gracious, those guys were astounding. You really need to look at those guys. Daniel Boone, just going to Kentucky. He was a pretty curious guy and it really did great things for him. Michelangelo, he was willing to be curious and mess around with art and paints and sculpting materials. Really not a lot of people had done before him. Curious people do amazing things. They often are people who are discoverers or explorers. You need to let your child know there's a great value in curiosity. It is oftentimes the reason why nowadays you have a computer that'll fit inside your phone that you can hold on to. When I was a girl, computers occupied entire buildings, and I do mean a single computer. Just the brain, the motherboard of the computer, took up like a 40 by 60 foot room. Now it's about this big and you can hold it in your hand and take it everywhere you go. Do you know why that happened? Because somebody somewhere was so curious about electronics and the possibility of artificial intelligence and the kinds of things it could do and being willing to explore various ways to make it work. I can't even imagine how many times they failed before it worked. But their curiosity compelled them forward. Help your child really look at the value of curiosity. I'm going to tell you another area that's really, it's of great interest to me. That is space. Someone in Russia was far more interested in space than we were. But back in the 50s, we were so competitive with them during the years of the Cold War that when they put Sputnik up and when they sent up a small capsule with a monkey inside of it, oh, that was it. We decided we need to step up our game. We were not going to let them get a man into space first, much less get a guy on the moon ahead of us. And it compelled the program in, in space exploration to really move forward with NASA. Do you understand all the things this took? It didn't just take the kind of propulsion that would allow a space capsule to break gravity, the force of gravity on the Earth to get all the way to the moon. It involved things like spacesuits that were going to allow someone to live, foods, that could be stored for extensive periods of time without rotting. You know, there was no such thing as freeze-dried anything when I was a kid. It didn't exist. This level of curiosity and willingness to learn and explore, it led to so many things. It led to a number of things medically. So much of what we have medically is actually related to space exploration. So many of the things that we have today are directly related to all of the research and to all of what it took to make the space exploration process possible. And so that's what you want to teach your children, the value of curiosity, how more and more about what you learn and what other people did because of their curiosity has really impacted our world in such a great way. Okay. One of the other things that is always so fascinating to me is the sea. Anytime I watch a National Geographic or a World Wildlife Federation program, I am so amazed at what we have no idea about in the sea. The sea is really probably one of the greatest unexplored terrains that is left to man. And people are dev devising submersibles that can go to incredible depths. 
I absolutely loved it when they started dealing with things in relationship to bring stuff up from the Titanic. And that also forced them to create certain kinds of underwater vessels and vacuum sealed things that they could safely bring it up without it all just disintegrating when it got exposed to oxygen after so long being in the water. There are a lot of things that are really great for your kids to understand the value of curiosity. I'm going to tell you another one that doesn't interest me as much, but it interests one of my grandsons. So I have spent a good bit of time looking at that. And that is sports, sports safety, sports equipment, uh, the things that you do to work out and develop your body so that you can be better at sports. This is a huge field, sports medicine, uh, you know, Nike didn't exist when I was a kid. You just put on some old pair of tennis shoes. Today, there are all kinds of athletic shoes, depending on what you're doing, so that they give the proper support to your body and they allow you to run without damaging your knees or doing, you know, some kind of injury to your ankles or your feet on particular kinds of running surfaces. Oh, and the development of running surfaces. Tracks are made really differently than they used to be. Even in the Olympics, people used to run on a dirt track. Face facts, in baseball, people used to just run on bare dirt. They'd tear up the grass across the base from one base to the next on the running line on that track, and it was dirt. Um, there has just been a ton of development in our world because of people's curiosity. So you want to teach your child the value of curiosity. You don't know your child might be the very person who discovers the cure for cancer. If you are squelching their curiosity, if you are trying in some way to hold them back or quiet them down, you actually might be doing damage to all of humankind. I'm not kidding you. I don't imagine that when Thomas Edison was a kid and he did poorly in school, he didn't really read well. He was just a very unusual person. That that was always comfortable for his mom and his dad. They probably tried really hard to normalize that kid. Well, he wasn't normal. Thank heavens. <laughs> so listen, if you have a child and he's a little abnormal and you don't really like him and he doesn't fit in, oh my word, let that child be who he was created to be. It might have great ramifications for all of humankind. I mean it. Teach your child the value of curiosity. Helping your child understand that there have been really great mathematicians historically who have devised formulae and found ways that the world works. You know, math is not my thing, but I have a niece who loves mathematics and it's very fascinating to her. And she says all the time that when they work on particular kinds of algorithms or certain things happen scientifically and mathematically, what that has done for us. Uh, I'm definitely going to tell you about people who got so curious about what went on at a much smaller level. It compelled them to start developing a microscope, looking at blood, looking at various kinds of tissue samples and saying, oh my word, they thought we were composed of one kind of cell. And that's not the truth. We have hundreds, if not tens of thousands of kinds of cells within our body structures. And they each have their own form and function. That's really fascinating. It was curious people who started to develop those ideas and help us understand so much more about medicine and the ways that our bodies work. So your child will begin to see the beauty and the wonder of people who are curious and the value of what curiosity has done for all of us. I want to thank you today for joining me on Paint a Beautiful Picture. Please leave me a comment. If you learned something or gained something of value today, feel free to share this. And I want to ask you a question. Do you value curiosity? Just in general. Are you thrilled to have electricity? Are you really glad that you have a computer on your phone? Do you like to watch cable TV? I didn't even talk about putting satellites up in the sky and the ability to bounce waves around. And there is so much in the world. Are you thankful that you have modern medicine? Oh, are you glad that you get to drive a car? Do you yourself value curiosity? And are you committed to teaching your child to value curiosity in others and in themselves? It's a great thing. I'm thankful to have a curious spirit and a curious mind. And I hope that you learn today there's a lot to value 
that you have gained from the curiosity of others. I will see you again soon on Paint a Beautiful Picture. You may find additional information on our paintabeautifulpicture.com website. Additionally, you may watch me on Rumble, and you may also listen to a podcast on Buzzsprout or Spreaker, all under the name Paint a Beautiful Picture. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You may subscribe, and if you are interested in receiving notifications, please hit the notifications button.